just an incredible sight for anyone around the area this morning. Fireworks exploding out of a semi truck after that huge pileup in Kalamazoo County. More than 100 vehicles were involved in the pileup on I-94. At least one person was killed, dozens injured. We have continuing team coverage tonight. First, though, we go back to Fox 17's Darren Cunningham for the latest updates on this crash. And Darren, we're hearing it's going to take another 14 hours to get this all cleaned up. Yeah, it's a long time, Michelle, and right now the smoke is still going. Take a look right behind me here. It might be difficult to see that smoke because it is cloudy, but it's been billowing for hours. The Kalamazoo County Sheriff told me crews are now working to put out car fires. As we've reported, there are two pileups on both sides of the highway, causing a semi to burst into flames. Next to that burning semi, another truck was hauling fireworks. Look at what happened while we were shooting video. That would be fireworks igniting as our camera rolled. Fox 17 photojournalist Chris Sage had to dive into a ditch to get out of harm's way. In fact, everyone ran for cover. We really couldn't believe what we were watching. We heard state police say more than 100 vehicles were involved. I think at this point we're saying about 120 vehicles. There's very little space between the pileups on both sides. Where one ends, the other begins. Sheriff Richard Fuller told me it's not clear why a second pileup occurred, but he suspects it was a domino effect on both sides of I-94. This is I-94. This is not the first pileup we've heard of, unfortunately. Right. In your years of experience, just talk about this. What is what is it about this stretch? Uh, in this stretch, um, I've worked out here uh, for over 26 years now, and in this stretch, what we have found is that uh, you're in a wind tunnel. I mean, right now you can feel the wind. You can probably see it pushing against all of us, and uh, the wind pushes straight on down I-94. So that has its own problems. Uh, sometimes it's icy because of that. Sometimes it's just wind blown where you can't see the road, and so all, any of those conditions could be a contributing factor to today's crashes. And Fuller says uh, that county and area agencies uh, do what they can to prevent something like this, but because of nature, sometimes there's just too much to overcome and the roads become icy. Now we're told that uh, roads will stay shut down, as you mentioned, uh, for about 14 more hours or so as investigators comb this catastrophe. I also want to point out that there was or still is concern as to whether there are more victims uh, within that crash site crash site because they're so focused on trying to put out that fire right now. So um, I guess we'll learn more as the evening goes along. But for now, reporting live in Kalamazoo County, Darren Cunningham, Fox 17 News. All right, Darren, thanks for that. We'll see you again next hour. And we continue our team coverage right now with Fox 17's Paul Cicchini. He is live for us at Galesburg Augusta School where some of the victims were taken. So, Paul, how many people are we talking about there? Yeah, Michelle, we're at uh, the Augusta uh, Excuse me, uh, the Galesburg Augusta Primary School, elementary school here, and it's believed that about 150 people or so were brought here initially, several busloads of people. If you want to take a look behind me, you can see some people still milling about. And, uh, you know, they've been coming in and out in these hours after the crash. It's unknown, of course, exactly how long this whole process is going to take because, as you heard Darren mention, could be upwards of 14 hours before that uh, crash investigation is complete. Now, right now, MSP is still taking accident reports. Medical staff is evaluating some of the victims still here. Others are just warming up, getting something to eat and, and or drink um, before they get a ride home or, or word on when they might be able to collect their vehicles um, if it can be driven away at all. So no word on exactly how long uh, this is going to take, but the Red Cross says they will be here as long as is necessary. Now, we had a chance to speak with some of those people involved in the crash, including a pastor from Battle Creek. It just happened so fast, really. You don't, you're really not thinking too much. Uh, um, it was just kind of just watching a semis you know two different you know two different semis one just flying right sliding right by you you're like oh, no don't hit me don't hit me and i believe yeah yeah god's always wa uh, watching out for us so no doubt about it uh so you know today for sure um you know walk out of something like that and nearly miss a semi uh, uh just running over the front of your car by about 10 feet and getting hit and walking out with not a scratch it's uh so by the grace of god so 
Now, again, it's unclear exactly how long this warming shelter will need to be open, but it is going to be open as long as is necessary to make sure that everybody who is here coming in or out will be taken care of and that they will have either a, a, a ride home or some form of transportation to get back to their vehicle wherever it may be. Of course, the Red Cross um, of Kalamazoo and Battle Creek and Michigan as a whole is here on scene and uh, you know, they are prepared um, on call basically for disasters just like this one. Um, of course, they're always accepting help. So if you want to make a donation, of course, they're always accepting monetary donations and any uh, opportunity that you might get to donate blood, of course, they will accept that as well. Um, we'll keep in touch here and bring you another update as uh, soon as we get one for now. We are live in Kalamazoo County. Paul Cicchini, Fox 17 News. All right, thanks, Paul. We continue our team coverage now with Jessica McMaster, who spoke with a witness earlier today. She is live for us once again near Galesburg. Jess. Yeah, Michelle, as you heard Darren mentioning a little bit earlier, these crews aren't going home anytime soon. Take a look at another live look from this scene. You can see that there are still tractor trailers in the ditch there. We're told that there were 50 to 60 trucks like this involved in this crash with a total of more than 100 vehicles all in all. Just an incredibly horrific sight out there. And as Michelle mentioned, we did speak with a witness at Olette who actually provided us with this video you see here. He was on his way to work driving west on I-94 when he came upon the crash that was in those eastbound lanes. He says traffic came to a halt. That's when he pulled off to the side of the road and began recording. But then suddenly a second crash began to happen right behind him. Everybody kind of stopped and was just kind of looking to see what's going on. And then the cars behind us just started piling up. Driving upon it was uh, pretty scary with vehicles hanging on the guardrail and uh, seeing some flames starting. Um, that was concerning. And when you see people running, uh, that is, uh, it's certainly a scary situation. And again, it's still too early to know how many people were injured in this pileup. We do know that there was one death, but of course, they're still going through some cars, putting out fires. So it's going to be several hours before we have all the details, but we're going to be following back up throughout the five and six o'clock newscast. So you're going to want to stick with us for those most accurate up to date information. For now, reporting live in Kalamazoo County, Jessica McMaster, Fox 17 News. All right, Jess, we'll see you then. Thanks for that. And joining me now in the studio to talk about weather conditions at the time of that pileup. Again, you mentioned that snow squall and the sheriff's Said that makes sense because it was on both sides of the highway. And I can show you that on radar in just a second. Let's talk about what preceded that though, Michelle. In yeah. that area from Kalamazoo to Galesburg, yeah. they had about seven or eight inches of snow from the winter storm itself. Yeah. They were technically still under winter storm warnings until 4 p.m. But what was it what was what it was transitioning to was the uh, the lake effect and that snow squall that came in. We've got current conditions that were down at the time. Good afternoon, everybody. There is no Galesburg uh, official National Weather Service reporting station, so we go to the closest one, which was Kalamazoo and Battle Creek, because Galesburg is between those two. At 9 o'clock this morning, it was 14 degrees in Kalamazoo. It was 17 in Battle Creek. It had a wind chill of one below in Kalamazoo, three above in uh, Battle Creek. So you can extrapolate that between the two in Galesburg, temperature would have been around 15 degrees. Why is that another important factor? Because once you get below about 17 or 18 degrees, the, uh, the salt really doesn't do a whole lot. We had westerly winds at both reporting stations at about 14 miles per hour and a visibility at about three quarters of a mile until you see the radar. This is radar from 830 in the morning till about 915, 930. Here's Battle Creek. There's Kalamazoo. There's Galesburg. This is I-94. Look at that dark blue band of lake effect uh, come in there, creating a snow squall, whiteout conditions, and probably reducing visibilities to around zero. Let's zoom in a little bit closer. This is the section that we're talking about. And look, we'll stop the radar. Remember how the uh, sheriff and how Michelle just mentioned in uh, Darren's piece was created or talking about uh, that long westerly wind along I-94. This is I-94, several miles. The wind's coming in from this way, several miles right along I-94. And that's what's creating the icy conditions and probably the snow squall and the whiteout conditions. As Joe Kopachek mentioned a few minutes ago, Lake effect can be a highly variable thing. In some locations, it might be sunshine, and all of a sudden you drive into one of these snow squalls and it changes absolutely like that. And this is very reminiscent over the last several years here in West Michigan, along places like US 131, 196, I-96, to where we see these 10, 20, 30, 40 car pileups because of these lake effect snow squalls that come in and then they disappear a few minutes later. Obviously, the damage was already done there with people not being able to stop. And of course, this was all preceded 
exceeded by the roads already being snow covered and icy from the seven or eight inches that we had from the actual system itself. We'll talk more about this coming up in the five o'clock hour. And if you want more on my analysis from a meteorological perspective of this car pileup, I've got a story posted with all the details we just went over. If you go to Fox 17 online.com or check our Fox 17 Facebook page, Michelle.